I got a special guest, um, Derek, man. Introduce yourself, brother. All right, so my name is uh, Derek Allen. Um, live here in Cortland, New York. Uh, coach basketball. Um, lucky enough to have an awesome wife and now three kids. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a newer member here at Clocked In, um, but I've been coming for the last three, four months. It's been a, a great decision, great life change right there. Um, and uh, I've known Caleb for a long time, so super excited to be here and be on the podcast. It's going to be awesome, man. Um, all right, let's dive into sports early on. Um, how did that start? Where did it start? Where did you go to school? Talk to me a little bit about that. Background. Yeah, I mean, so sports started in my life right when I was born. I think my dad tells a story. He put a basketball in my uh, in my crib, like right when I was born. So right from the get go, I was I was watching sports and all that. Um, from my earliest days, I remember I was probably four, five, six years old. I was playing basketball, playing soccer. Um, those were kind of like the first couple that really stuck. And then it was the whole t-ball thing and soccer, basketball, baseball were like the three sports that I just really played the most, um, and basketball being my favorite throughout, you know, uh, just basketball has been my life for a long time, long time. Um, and just that love of the game and really any sort of competitive thing. Like, yeah, I played soccer, basketball, and baseball, but I didn't care if it was two in touch in the side yard. You know, I wanted to win. Um, my buddies, we've got a great group of friends here in Cortland that uh, we we just compete in everything we do. You know, no matter what it is, we're competing all the time. Um, and that's sort of been like my personality throughout. And it's a big part of my life, just competition. And, uh, and basketball has been the number one. Um, and I went to Cortland High School. So... Quote in high school, we uh, I played soccer, basketball, and baseball. I played three years of varsity soccer, captain, two of those years. Uh, basketball, I was captain, uh, two of those three years. And then baseball, I played varsity for uh, junior year and senior year. So cool, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a dope little. That's a dope little um, sports background, man. A um, couple things uh, for me, right? Um, being someone that was a couple years younger, um, I'd have to co-sign the competition part, right? You're very competitive, man, and and I think um, not just you, like you mentioned, your friends, that that age group um, that you guys had definitely helped to catapult us, mm -hmm. I think, um, into being the best athletes that we could be, but um, the best competitors that we could be too, right? Aside from a skill set perspective. Yeah. You know, just that, like that extra grit where you want to, you want to win at all costs, you know, like just that extra effort all the time and practice and like something we just mentioned, like taking the off season seriously. Like right. there was no time where a coach might have said, Hey, we're gonna get together and we're gonna do this. And I was just like, you know what? Nah, I don't want to go today. Like that wasn't in my brain. Right. You know? It wasn't for bat baseball, it wasn't for basketball, it wasn't for soccer. Any of the main sports that I played, like I always wanted to go do those things. And that can't be said for everybody, you know, like you there is something to be said for for taking time and letting your body rest. You know, um, for better, or for worse, I didn't have any of those. You know, I didn't want any of those. I always wanted to be doing one of those things. Um, and that's why I just always any camp I could go to any sort of training I could go to it. I went to it. And did that necessarily put me into a position to play a college sport? It didn't, wow. which is a whole nother topic for something else. But right. college sports are hard. Yeah, I think I might be one of the only people that, uh, has ever been caught from three sports wow. in college. Wow. I don't know if you knew that. No. Yeah. Yeah. So I was cut from the basketball team my okay. freshman year. Tried out for that. Made the first cut. Then they cut me and a few other kids. And that was that. And I went to SUNY Cortland. So it was a pretty good sports school. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I got cut from the basketball team. Okay. And then the next season, I was friends with a bunch of football players. Yeah. And didn't play football my whole life. But I was friends with the whole football team. So I decided I was going to try to be a kicker. Okay. Let's do it, you know? And at the same time, I tried out for the soccer team. And there was a lot of, uh, if you haven't kicked a football, it uses some muscles that you <laughs> might not use all the time. So so going into the tryout, my groin was just jacked up. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah. It, it was fun. You know, it was a good experience. But yeah. uh, like I said, it, just because, you know, you put in all that extra effort and you do all that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make a college team. Right. 
You know, there, there's a lot of work and a lot of things that have to go into it. Right. And sure, could have I played at a different college? I could have. You know, I could have went to a, a CUCA or a, some other smaller school yeah, yeah. in yeah. state or even a couple out of state school I was looking at. But I chose to go to SUNY Cortland and I, I didn't make it. And that's OK. Yeah. yeah. You know, for me, it was OK, even though I was competitive and I was competitor. It was OK at that time because it brought me to something else in life. Right. Which is where we're at now. Yeah. Right. And and yeah. and and it's really cool to listen to you talk about that. Right. Like there's an ability and there's a way to um, push your competitive nature past sports. Right. You True. can be the best father you want to be and compete with that. You can be the best husband. You can at your job if you're not a family yeah. man. Right. I want to make this many sales or I want to be the best blah, 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 blah. Like you can do that in so many ways in competing. And I think, um, yeah, maybe the college sports scene didn't work for you, but I would say the life competitive scene worked for you. Yeah. Right? Like, like who you are now, we'll talk about a little bit more, but like who you are now and, and what you're, um, you're founded in, right. Your morals and everything else to me, like the competition is part of work for you. Yeah. Like into my job today, like I want to be the best salesperson that I can be. I want to help lead my team at Graftex to the best team that it can be. Um, and even in, in Crown City Hoops in the, in, the, in the league right now, like I'm still hooping. I'm 30, 34, about to be 35. <laughs> I might be the oldest or the second oldest person in the league consistently, but right. I'm still out there hooping, having a good time and, uh, and competing at the highest level for, right. for me, for what we can do at this at right now. Absolutely. You know? I love it. I love it, man. So um, we'll, we'll stay on that competitive nature, right? And we'll talk coaching, right? Because I yeah. feel like um you're a competitive coach as well right so talk a little bit about your um your coaching history throughout yeah so i got into coaching well I, when i was in high school i wanted to be a college basketball coach that was my dream I'm like i want to be a college basketball coach um so after i got cut at suny Cortland, um my plan i got right into coaching uh with buddy mahar shout out to the mahars and Cortland basketball club back in the day for starting up my my love for coaching um so i started coaching fifth grade basketball for the youth bureau and then that turned into travel basketball with Cortland basketball club um and then that grew to some different camps throughout the summer and i'm like okay i want to be a college basketball coach this yeah. is going to happen and and then i kind of realized that you, you got to go through about 10 to 12 <laughs> years where you you make sh nothing for money um and that just didn't quite work with my lifestyle and my goals down the road with having a family quick and want to do all that. So um, I was able to start coaching at the high school level okay, um, and the AAU level. And we eventually grew the Cortland Basketball Club to a, a full-fledged AAU program. Um, and then I got into coaching uh, at McGraw High School, the okay. varsity team yeah. there. Yeah, um, I was an assistant at Cortland for a few years before that, Cortland High School, uh, with Coach Milligan. Shout out to Coach Milligan. Um, and the uh, – the next step was taking on my own varsity program right. at McGraw. And we had three really, really successful years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then COVID hit, changed things a lot um, at the school, changed things in general, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a newborn baby. Right. Um, and then a second one on the way right after that. Okay. So once the second one, we found out we were having um, Ophelia. So I got a five-year-old son named Cecil. He's great. My man, Cecil. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and a three-year-old Ophelia. Once Ophelia was was about to be born we decided that i was going to take a year off from okay. coaching just okay. to just to regroup with the family because that always comes first um and then after a year of no coaching i went back to Cortland high school as an assistant varsity and now this year i'll be uh the head jv coach let's go so, man. Stay, yeah it's gonna be fun it, right and so and that's cool right when you break that down to me because i still hear compete compete yeah. Right. If there's one thing about you, man, it's it's your work ethic, right? You're you're super driven, um, you're passionate about the things that you care about, and you're competitive, right? And I think those are those are traits and, and um, qualities, man, that that literally equal and lead to success. And and being in here and clocked in, you know, at the gym has even furthered that um, love for competition. All right, Derek, we're timing you in this workout. Like I look forward to those timed workouts because yeah, I, mean, yeah. I want to beat this time or I heard somebody made this number. I want to beat that number right. without a doubt. Right. Um, so that's that's been cool starting this up the last few months yeah. with, with the gym just because to really further that competitive yeah. need. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Cool. And, and, and I think it's funny, right, because um, some people were so competitive that we we have to find 
that competition and things, right? And yeah. I think that um, for you, the difference is you found the healthy competition yes. in it, right? It's, it's all healthy. It's all conducive positively for you, for your family, uh, for others around you, right? And, um, and the success in that. Definitely. So I think that's amazing. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Let's take a little, a little U-turn um, and talk about uh, – we talk a lot about pivots on this show, right? Yeah. About tough times, things that we've been through. Um, tell me, you know, one of the tougher times that you've been through um, and how you pivoted from that and, and where you are today from that. Yeah, without a doubt, um, one of the biggest days in my life. I think it's, it's almost more important to me than my own, my own birthday, really, because this, yeah. is, this is the time I got a second lease on life. August 24th, 2012, um, I woke up that morning and I made this, I, I, God made the decision for me, you know? Yeah. We together collectively made a decision that I need to get sober. Mm. So I was, at the time, I, I was young, I was 22 years old, you know? So, which is young to make a decision that you need to get sober. Um, but I had a problem with alcohol. Um, I, I didn't drink every day. Like it wasn't like I drank every day and, and needed to drink all the time. It was more of a thing that whenever I did go out, I would get blackout drunk and I would make bad decisions, right. you know, from two DWIs, one when I was 17, one when I was 21, um, 22. And then even then a few months after that, even I still continued on just making bad decisions. And then I woke up one morning, lost wallet, lost phone. Kind of they talk about like this divine intervention, like something needs to change. I woke up that morning, showed up late to work. Like, hey, my dad calls. Here's you. I heard your wallet's down here. What are you doing? Like just everything clicked at once that I need to make a life change or else I'm going to one, kill somebody else. Number two, kill myself. And number three, not accomplish any of those goals that I wanted in my life with a family, with a good job, with a great life, with a great community. Yeah. Um, so that, that day, August 24, 2012, I went to my first AA meeting. And somebody invited me to come, brought me there. Uh, and I'll never forget, it, it, was, it was just life-changing because I knew when I got in there, and this isn't the case for every alcoholic, every sort of scenario is different. Um, you have to, number one, want to get sober. And number two, you have to, you have to put in the effort and put in the work. Um, but when I was in that room that night, I knew I needed to be there. And I knew that if I put in the work, put in the effort and go one day at a time it's it's gonna pay dividends in my life and luckily it has so that day is just a huge day and the next 90 days after that you know i'd go to one to two meetings a day it was a commitment but it's what i had to do to number one get sober and make my life the life that i, I want it to be absolutely man so um Awesome. Uh, when you when you look at it now, I mean, that's what, 12 years ago. Yeah. Right? 12 years, 12 years of one day at a time. One day at a time. That's how that's right. the way you look at it. I saw this really cool quote one time. It was a Usain Bolt and he said something like I'll paraphrase it, but it was like it took seven years for me to win one championship. Right. Like to, to, there's so many little steps of greatness mm -hmm. um, that it takes to be great. Right. That people don't realize it, man. So when you look back at that 12 years ago. Uh, now where you're at, right, with your with your wife, your beautiful kids. Um, how how honestly, how proud of you are you? You know, it, it really like that's part of it is you need to you need to take stock in yourself and and kind of look at yourself and and be proud and be happy for yourself because yeah, it's those first few years. Is it tough now? Not so much. It's not so hard right now. You know. Um, because I have my, my wife who never knew me as a drinker. Right. I, had, I have my kids who never knew me as a drinker. I have my faith, you know? Yeah. Do I go to church every Sunday? I don't, but I want to. You know, a lot of times I want to. Right, right, right. But it's dragging a kid with me or dragging this kid with me. It doesn't happen all the time. But that, that faith and that, that higher power they talk about is so true. Um, and those rooms, 
you know, to put the work in. And my, my kids, God, God willing, will never know me as right. a drinker. Right. Will never. And and I hope to um, just just keep that up. Like I said, one day at a time. And it's been huge in my life. My my health. I feel like I'm healthier than ever. You know. Um, it's just been just been good. I'm not I'm not waking up in bushes or waking up in porches right. or not knowing where my truck is or anything right. like that. It's just it's just amazing to not have that, you know, weighing on your shoulders. So. I love that, man. And, and yeah, and this like this brick by brick mentality, right, where um, we 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 lay a brick down, we wait a second, we lay another one. And before we know it, we have um, a mansion. Right. And yeah. more importantly, we have a solid foundation, which is uh, one thing that I can say that I'm inspired by you at. Right. Is um, you have through the things that you've been through, right, you've created a solid foundation for not only yourself, which is obviously the most important, right, but um, but for your wife mm-hmm. and your kids, right, and and realistically, bro, your kids' kids. Yeah. And some, right, and then not just them, but all the stuff that you do in the community, man, um, wouldn't have happened if you didn't take that step at 22 years old. Definitely not. That's nuts to think, right? That's such a mature set, like, mindset to have at that age. And and then more importantly to continue that throughout, right? Um, so so I want you to know, man, like you're an inspiration, right? And um, you might not realize it. I think sometimes in time uh, we we kind of figure it out. But yeah. twelve years from now, bro, you're gonna look back at it, and you're not even gonna think about that. It's gonna be all of what you are a part of, oh right? All of what you built, all of these bricks that you laid. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll one day be able to look back and be like, man, at twenty two. I made a decision, right, that impacted generations and people that I had no idea. That's so true. You know what I mean? With and that first brick. That's it. And it's the hardest one. Yeah. Right. And and the cool thing about the gym, this is what I love about the gym, is that um, when people hit a PR, right, um, I love it. I get excited for them. And the first thing I tell them, I was like, but listen, it gets harder. What do you mean? Because the weight gets heavier. Yeah. Right. You got stronger, but that doesn't mean that things get easier in life. It just means that you are now equipped to handle the hard. That's the truth. That's the truth. So so I'm proud of you, bro. But I'm more inspired because at 22, right, you you laid the brick to equip yourself to handle things at 34, to handle things at 46, at 58, at 60. Right. To to be a grandfather one day. Yeah. And handle that, man. And you might not have realized it at 22. But when you get to that spot, bro, it's going to be a beautiful thing to look at. You know what I mean? And so I'm proud of you for that. I'm going to give you your flowers for that, man. And and more importantly, for all the things that you do um, in the community, right? And and as um, as a husband first, right? And then as a father, because because yeah. that's that's the way that it should go, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and you are displaying those those things perfectly. You know what I mean? In in an imperfect way, right? Um, so I want to give you your flowers for that, bro. Um, I appreciate that, Caleb. Absolutely. Thank man. you. Um, lastly, man, anything um, for the youth, man? I know I just talked about it a little bit, um, but but just some words of encouragement, um, some words of wisdom for these kids out there, man, that either have maybe struggled with addiction, struggled with um, that that ability to let go, right? That want to take the first step. What are some things that you say to them? Yeah, I mean, when I was when I was seventeen. I had my first run in with any of that stuff, you know, and I chalked it up. I chalked it up as I'm young, you know, this, I, I'm not, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm young. This can't happen. I, 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 there's no way, you know? And I think, do I want to go back and say like, if I did made that decision at 17, you know, it'd be better for me. I don't know, but I wish that I took a, a next step and talked to more people about it, you know? Don't be afraid to take that step and talk to somebody about it. I'm a coach. I, I, I know a lot of kids out there. I'm always willing to talk about anything, you know, um, whether it be this alcohol, alcoholism or addiction or something going on that you don't want to talk to somebody else about, but you might want to talk to me, like talk to somebody about it. Because when you get things off your chest, that weight feels lifted Absolutely. and somebody else might have been through it before i've been through so many different scenarios in my life and and that's what it took is that ability to talk to other people about it you know Just don't hold things in like 
get it out there, get out in front of it and work to find a plan. And is it going to be like instantaneous? No, it's going to be that brick like we talked about. It's going to be that brick one layer at a time that's going to help build you to take that next step and and take things to the next level into further and better your life um, in that, whether it's athletics, whether it's sobriety, whether it's doing better in school, lay that first brick in order to take that next step. I love it, man. Yeah, you said it perfect. My guy. Hey. Appreciate you, man. I'm proud of you. I'm sure your family's proud of you. The community's proud of you. We love you, man. Uh, keep going, man. Keep pushing. Keep striving for